This is Red Dog Terrain. Welcome back to the shed. Today we're building part two of a big board. When last we left, this is where we were. Four one foot by four foot sections. Plateaus have been put in, an old stone road was laid out, a river was carved and filled with rocks, lots of skull to mold, and just a bit of paint. I painted on a quick base coat of a couple of different browns, I just squirt a little cheap craft paint into a lid and go. Having it all slopped together, I get a lot of natural variations in color and tones. I did the same with the top of the plateaus. For the riverbed, I started with a dull gray, and then, just like when I do brickwork or stonework, I picked out a few stones and painted them in different colors. Brown, tan, green, a few blue ones, some dark red ones. Looking back, I wish I had done a little more of this. Washing and dry brush toned down the colors, and I have to remember this when putting on base coats. Dry brushing and washes, washes and dry brushing, pretty basic stuff. This build did not take a whole lot of skill, and I didn't really use any new techniques, but it sure took a while. 16 square feet takes a while to paint and dry, and it's winter time here in Louisiana. Our winters aren't really that cold, but they sure are wet. The great snake, known as Tesh, was not measured in feet, but in miles. It slithered across the land, eating wayward farmers or lost children. If it missed a few meals, and its hunger was great enough, it was known to eat small villages. The chief called together his warriors, young and old, veteran and new. The great snake must be killed. Hiding behind the low plateaus, with their simple wooden spears, their bows and arrows, and axes made of bone, they waited. Then, with a simple wave of the chief's hand, hundreds of warriors, stretching down the river, sprung into action. After days of fighting and many lives lost, the great snake was defeated. Over the decades, its body decomposed and left a long indention. When the rains came, it filled, and the Bayou Tesh was born. Next came time to add some foliage. I drizzled on glue and then blotted it around. I made sure that the river section had extra glue so it would be greener. The road section, I wanted to leave out gaps in the grass. I wanted it to look muddier and well traveled. For the plateaus, I used more yellow grass around the elevated half. It's subtle, but it's there. I did something I'd seen others do. I used a handheld vacuum with a dryer sheet because we didn't have any pantyhose in the house over the nozzle. This sucks up and saves the grass that didn't touch the glue. It also makes the grass stand up a bit more. Unfortunately, for some reason, I didn't film this. I thought I did though. This board is so big, I almost ran out of grass. I thought I had way more than I needed. I was wrong. I definitely need more. Then I sprinkled on a variety of flocks. After that, I finally used huge miniatures four in one scatter flock. It has a bit of green flock, a bit of grass, little bits of wood, and some small pink flock to look like small flowers. This stuff is great. It adds so much to the plain grass. It's hard to see on camera, but this stuff works so well. 10 out of 10, would recommend. You 
can really see how good the grass looks in this flyover shot. I saw someone use this metallic tape to create a dam for a resin pour, and I wanted to try it, because it's easy to acquire and versatile. You're supposed to fold it in half, and then put another piece over top. Maybe it's something I did wrong, but this leaked badly. So I went with a tried and true method. I had to cut up a plastic container I had laying around for the wall, then I hot glued it in place and applied pressure. Lots of hot glue. I mixed up a large batch of Alumalite Amazing Clear Cast with a few drops of brown and blue ink. I probably could have done with a little more ink. And then I poured it in. I used a hot glue gun to get rid of the bubbles. I was so nervous. During the drying process, I would head back and forth to the shed every few hours to check on it. But there were no issues. The second layer was way better because I poured it and then we left for two days to visit the in-laws. At some point I had added some sticks from the yard to look like logs. I'm so proud of how this turned out. I've seen people on YouTube doing resin and thought it was so cool but too complicated and hard for me. But it's not. And it's not too hard for you. If I can do this, you can do this. With a brand new blade, I cut away the plastic wall, and success. No leaks, no uncured resin, we got a winner folks. I trimmed off the lip and sanded the edges. First I used my Dremel to get rid of the bulk, and then regular sandpaper. I used a very light sandpaper when I got to the resin. Also I used a bit of clear nail polish on the edge to make it more transparent. I also repainted the edges black. I blotted on some Mod Podge to make some ripples and this worked fairly well. I cleaned everything off, sprayed all the grass with icy purple alcohol and then soaked it in watered down PVA glue to lock it in. There are 24 different combinations this can be set up in, and that doesn't include rotating individual sections. I can't wait to play on this thing. It's so big, and it's so cool. The channel has barely been around a year, and I want to thank you all so much. Thanks to those who bring me bits and visit me at cons. Thanks to people who put my stickers on their Playstations. Thanks to those who wear my shirts. Thanks to anyone who has commented or liked the video. Thanks to my supportive and amazing partner. Thanks to you just for being here. Thank you.